right, everybody, we are going to talk here about a favorite on the USMLE, and that is rheumatoid arthritis. You do run into this quite a bit um, in the clinic. Um, however, I would say it's much more commonly tested uh, than seen. But it is a common disorder, so it is something you want to put in your back pocket, at least for the exam, but for clinical practice as well. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated and certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get updates and notifications as I put more and more videos up. Okay, so let's just do a quick overview. Rheumatoid arthritis is chronic, it's systemic, and it's inflammatory. So what that means is this is something you're going to live with for the rest of your life. It affects more than just the joints, even though it's called arthritis, and it's inflammatory. Um, so um, you're going to have an elevated sed rate, and if you were to do uh, an arthrocentesis, you would get a joint fluid that would be consistent with an inflammatory arthritis. It's highlighted by severe symmetric joint pain, and that's important because things like osteoarthritis, it might just hurt in one joint, usually it's the knee. With rheumatoid arthritis, it tends to be small joints, especially the wrists and the hands. Um, this is progressive, so it does reduce the quality of life as it gets worse. And so for that reason, we really want to treat this as quickly as we can. And so early aggressive medical treatment is indeed the standard of care, and we'll go into the treatment in a little bit. Epidemiologically, it affects up to 1% of North Americans, although the, um, the exact percentage of the number or of the people who are um, the exact percentage of populations that are affected are going to vary depending on race and gender. So uh, Native American populations have a several fold higher uh, incidence of rheumatoid arthritis and women are absolutely affected more than men. And that holds true for a lot, uh, most of the autoimmune disorders. The pathophysiology is not completely understood, so don't worry about that. And the diagnosis is actually clinical. However, labs will help us. As we're going to see, there's a criteria um, that uh, we look for. So there's no one pathognomonic test. However, you do, do need to know that getting rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP are going to be absolutely essential for nailing down this diagnosis. So you should know those two at least. So what I always like to do is use the slice mnemonic, uh, if you will, uh, when evaluating a patient who says they have joint pain. So S is for systemic. Is it systemic or is it not? Is it just joint pain or are there other features? So in RA, yes, they're going to have constitutional signs like fatigue, malaise, weakness, and maybe a fever of unexplained origin. There are other systemic complications as well. L for location, where is it? RA typically doesn't present in the knees or in the feet. It presents in the wrists and hands. Uh, however, notably in RA, the distal interphalangeal joints and the lower back tend to be spared. I for inflammation, is it an inflammatory arthritis? Is the joint that's affected or joints that are affected, are they red and warm and tender or do they not really look inflamed at all. In RA, they will be warm and erythematous. C for chronicity. When did this start? If it's acute, you might look at something like maybe a septic arthritis or maybe uh, a reactive arthritis. Whereas if this has been going on for months, we look at RA. And we also want to know when is the pain bad. If it's bad in the morning and gets better as the day goes on, that suggests an inflammatory autoimmune cause. Whereas if the pain gets worse as the day goes on, that suggests like an osteoarthritis. And then E for evidence of trauma, obviously no trauma involved here. So we look for a history of joint pain, especially that's worse in the morning, as well as systemic signs, fever and malaise. They may have pallor that's present because this is chronic and inflammatory. You can get an anemia of chronic disease, so we look for that. Usually this presents in early adulthood, how, uh, so we're thinking 30s, 40s, uh, but in men who get RA, it tends to present later. Common physical findings include uh, joint findings consistent with an inflammatory arthritis, 
especially hands and wrists. Uh, later on, we begin to see ulnar deviation of the digits. Do not expect to see that as a first presentation. Uh, you can get the boutonniere defor deformity of the fingers as well as a swan neck deformity. I'll show you a picture of that. You can see nodules on the bony prominences. Those are called rheumatoid nodules. And then you can get a cyst uh, on the back of your knee, and that's called a popliteal or a baker cyst. Now these are um, some of the diagnostic criteria from the American College of Rheumatology. You need to have four or more of these. However, we tend to use this. Um, and so this is a scoring system. Um, and the more points that you have, the more likely you are to have RA. Now, do you need to memorize this? No, just have a general idea of some of the things that we are looking for. And this is why we get the rheumatoid factor, the anti-CCP, and we can get a CRP and or ESR. Um, so I would include that. And keep in mind here um, that it does want you to rule out some of these other causes, and that can generally be done clinically. So what I would start doing uh, to work up the patient, if they have an arthritis, you should always x-ray it, okay? Whether that's in the knee, in the feet, in the shoulder, in the hands, always x-ray it. So that's the best initial diagnostic step. We wanna get a CBC and a BMP. That pretty much goes for everything. We wanna get a SED rate, and you can also include on that C-reactive protein too. Uh, we wanna get a rheumatoid factor. If we're thinking uh, RA or really a lot of arthritides that um, come with systemic signs, we should get a rheumatoid factor. Um, you can include on this an ANA too, um, and then you can get anti, you, sh you need to get an anti-CCP. That's, um, that's, that's very specific for RA. And then if you do have a big swollen joint, an arthrocentesis would be okay as well. So I would start with this. And so what you're going to find on x-ray, typically you're going to see just soft tissue swelling. However, if this is later in the course of the disease, you may see joint erosion. And that's important. You see erosion of the joint, and that's going to set it apart from uh, the joint pain that you can get in lupus. CBC, like I said, you tend to have anemia of chronic disease, so normocytic anemia. BMP is usually unremarkable, but we'll see why that's going to be important to have had. SED rate and CRP will both be elevated. Rheumatoid factor is virtually always positive, and then that anti-CCP is positive. That is the most specific test. If you were to get an arthrocentesis, it would be consistent with an inflammatory arthritis, and you should know that this is uh, kind of what we look for in the various arthritides. The mainstay of treatment for RA is methotrexate. It has been for a long time. Uh, however, what you need to know, especially for CCS, is that when you have a patient who you're thinking about putting on methotrexate, you need to get liver panels, hepatitis panels, and a pregnancy test. Now, renal tests are important as well, but we generally include that as part of our initial workup. And then they will need to follow up with regular CBCs and liver function tests because methotrexate is myelosuppressive. So we want to look for decreases in any of the cell lines and it is mildly hepatotoxic. So we follow up in the liver function tests. The management is methotrexate. We add leucovorin onto that to reduce side effects. Prednisone. Okay, so we give prednisone as a bridge. When we initially diagnose them, prednisone will help reduce their symptoms and we also give it during flares as well. Ibuprofen, the patient, even before you send them home, even before you diagnose them with, with rheumatoid arthritis, you should make sure that they're taking ibuprofen for pain. So that should be uh, part of your orders even before RA is diagnosed. Um, then you want to counsel them about the side effects of the medication, particularly for methotrexate, and then you need to send off your referrals to rheumatology and physical therapy. However, methotrexate is the cornerstone of management, and we always on, add on to that NSAIDs. And early on, um, we give prednisone, uh, but we will taper that, okay? So that's just a bridge to get us through until the methotrexate starts working because it doesn't work right away. So we need to treat the pain and inflammation uh, to start out with as the methotrexate kind of kicks in. Now, if the patient can't tolerate methotrexate, let's say they've got liver disease, um, then we can try one of the other DMARDs, and that stands for um, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. 
So you can do hydroxychloroquine. We usually use that in lupus, uh, but you can use it in RA if they can't take methotrexate, and then sulfasalazine and leflunamide. Now, another instance where you may uh, switch them to hydroxychloroquine, for instance, is if they uh, want to get pregnant. We absolutely never give methotrexate in pregnancy. It's one of the most teratogenic drugs out there. If methotrexate does not control symptoms, then we'll add on a drug onto that. And so we usually go with these anti-TNF drugs, infliximab, adalimumab, and etanercept. Remember, though, that before we give any anti-TNF drug, that you are doing a tuberculin skin test or um, an IGRA because we don't want to reactivate any latent tuberculosis that may be there. Oh, shoot, I just answered my own question. All right. <laughs> well, now you know. So make sure that you're uh, getting a tuberculin skin test, manto test, or uh, an IGRA test. So here's your findings that are associated with RA. This is early on, so this is usually how they present. Looks pretty normal, maybe a little bit of swelling uh, around the MCPs and PIPs. Then as you progress, you start to get this ulnar deviation, okay? Now don't expect to see ulnar deviation in a patient presenting for the first time. It, it never happens. These are patients who've had long-standing RA. Here's ulnar deviation. And here's a radiograph. These are rheumatoid nodules, so they're fairly easy to recognize. And this satisfies a criteria for RA. And then here's the popliteal cyst, the Baker cyst. You can see it. Um, it forms kind of in the, what I like to call the knee pit. Here's the boutonniere and swan neck deformities. They're just deformities of the fingers. Notice how this one kind of looks like a swan neck. You know how swan's necks kind of come up like that? Um, that's what you have here. And then the boutonniere deformity is kind of the opposite. So just expect to see, you know, wrist and finger abnormalities. RA likes to affect the wrists and the fingers. Here's another one. So the complications usually come from adverse effects from the medications. This is a progressive syndrome, however, so even with medication, it does still progress somewhat. Felty syndrome is a complication. That's a triad of having RA and then having a neutropenia and a splenomegaly. The treatment here is just to make sure the RA is controlled. This is usually a sign of poorly controlled RA. Carpal tunnel syndrome can happen just to joint erosion, so we treat that as usual with casting and immobilization. And then atlantoaxial subluxation can be really, really bad. Um, and so uh, usually the way that this will be presented to you is that an RA patient went to the chiropractor. <laughs> Um, so that is another important one. Um, these patients will become paralyzed if they get this. Differential osteoarthritis, it worsens with, with use. It tends to be in older patients and it tends to affect large joints. Psoriatic arthritis, they will have a negative rheumatoid factor. Psoriatic and reactive arthritis are two disorders that are part of the seronegative spondylarthropathies. And what defines that is that they are rheumatoid factor negative. And I have a video on the seronegative spondylarthropathies. Psoriatic arthritis, not surprisingly, tends to have psoriasis as well. Reactive arthritis is more acute, tends to be in younger men. Um, look for an antecedent infection with uh, Campylobacter particularly, um, but any of the dysenteries can do it. Chlamydia is common uh, because this tends to happen in younger people, and then urea plasma. So these are some of the bacteria that can do it. Gout is also acute onset, particularly in older men. Uh, look for presentation at the big toe, pedagra, or at the knee. It is self-limited. Most of these patients have a history. Systemic lupus erythematosus is very similar uh, in presentation as far as the arthralgias go, but look for a malar rash. And if you were to do an x-ray, you would see non-erosive findings. So you would primarily uh, see that soft tissue swelling. So to recap, RA is a chronic systemic inflammatory disease uh, with severe symmetric joint pain and deformities because this is erosive. It is a clinical diagnosis, usually presents as a young woman, often of color, uh, who presents with an insidious onset of small joint pain. So you ask her how long it's been going on, she might not be able to tell you. She'll probably say weeks or probably months. Uh, it's worse in the morning, improves with use. That's very common with inflammatory arthropathies. 
particularly autoimmune. Workup needs to include x-ray of the hand figure, fingers, uh, rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP, and ESR. Uh, and I would also include CRP too. First line of treatment, methotrexate with leucovorin, prednisone to bridge them until the methotrexate works and they should always have an NSAID. Uh, make sure before starting methotrexate that you get renal and liver function tests, hepatitis panels, which by the way, on CCS, you can just type in hepatitis panels, it'll give you everything. And then a pregnancy test before starting methotrexate. And then biologics are added if there is an adequate treatment to methotrexate.